The next step in the thin section process involves grinding and polishing the sample chips so that they can be epoxied to a glass slide. In the past, before we had equipment to help automate and streamline the thin section process, our rock chips were individually polished by hand using glass plates and powdered grits. We'll discuss how to prepare your chips using this method in another video, but for now, we're going to use a variety of different silicon carbide grit papers with the forcipole to grind and polish our samples. The rock chips that you've cut on the rock saw are going to be left with blade marks and scratches and an uneven surface that's going to need to be polished down till it's smooth and reflective. We'll do that using the force pole and we'll start off with a coarse grit size and eventually work our way down to a finer grit. The grit size of the abrading particles is usually stated as a number that is inversely related to the particle size, such that smaller numbers such as 120 indicate a coarse grit while a large number such as 600 indicates a very fine grit. For most thin section projects, we're going to start out with a 120 or 240 grit size and work our way up to a 400 and eventually 600 grit. However, depending upon the quality of your rock saw and how rough your cut was, you may need to even start off with a, a much coarser grit such as a 6090. Now that we're ready to begin polishing our chips, we can get our equipment fired up and turned on. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our equipment. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to get our 240 grit paper. We're going to attach it to our wheel here. For our setup, it's a good idea to get this guy a little bit wet before you put your grit paper on. Maybe different for your setting, but the grit paper we use has a pressure sensitive adhesive. And so to keep it from completely sticking later to the wheel, it's a good idea to get it uh, nice and wet. Once we've done that, I'll take my grit paper, peel off the backing, and we will go ahead and fix it to our grinding wheel. Pressing it out nice and flat. I will place the splash guard ring around here, which will prevent water from splattering everywhere. And then before I actually start polishing, I like to turn the water back on and start my wheel just to get things nice and wet and ready for polishing. With my wheel now spinning, I'm ready to begin polishing. I've got a rock chip ready to go here. And the main thing you want to do is be careful you got a nice grip on it because you don't want it to get flung out of your hand. But I'm going to carefully place it on the wheel, try to maintain even pressure and just work it around the wheel. And this is gonna start polishing the surface of my sample. The settings we have on here can be adjusted. So the speed I have the wheel at right now is at about 300 revolutions per minute, but you can adjust that uh, depending upon your setup. But we found that that's a good speed for most polishing. Our equipment also has a timer that's set for 15 minutes. So usually anywhere from 15 minutes to even less than that is enough on any given grit paper to produce the, uh, the polish that you need. When I think I've finished polishing my chip or I've had it on the wheel long enough, the way I'll check it is to take it and hold it very close to eye level. And I'm looking basically this for a, a smooth, reflective, shiny surface. I should see the lights uh, and things from the ceiling reflecting off of that. And if I see that, that lets me know that I've polished this chip down as far as it can go and I'm ready to move to the next grit size. 